from Mont Blanc Yoga this morning. Mont Blanc here right behind me and I'm not blocking it out now so no staring at that and ignoring what I'm doing. Um, okay so um, this morning um, we're doing a class called Start Again. Um, oh don't need my glasses on now. <laughs> so Start Again. Um, we're not all needing to start again we're all yogis that have been doing it for a long time but the idea is to to look at what we are doing when we're on the mat because sometimes we have these samskaras which are habits and patterns that we repetitively um, uh, practice um, some of them are good some of them are, are not so good so it's just stopping and looking at what we do in each position there's quite a lot of, not quite a lot, but there's a bit of um, down dog in this. Um, so be aware that's an inversion, take it easy. And if it's not feeling right, take it into um, all fours. Always stop at any point you feel you need to. Um, we will work up to a full sun salutation and you can use the options that we go through as usual for that. Okay, so starting in Sukhasana. So find your seated position that you're comfortable in. I'm on a block as usual because I feel I'm more comfortable and I can open up more between my pelvis and my um, ribs that way. Um, so now that you're in that position, start again. So uncross your legs and cross your legs again. See if they want to go the same way. Mine suddenly went into the other one, but um, find just your legs as comfortable as possible. But also then find your sit bones and ground them. And then starting again from there, think about your posture. So from your sit bones, use your posture cues that we always use. Lift up through to your crown. Try and make that space between your ribs and your pelvic bones. It used to be called my waist. <laughs> See if you can lift out a little bit through there and find a bit more space. This is a space to breathe. We need breath space. And then start again and close your eyes if you haven't already. And find some head space. So we do that by focusing on our breath. So just watch your breath for a second as it is. And then start to control your breath and start to breathe in for your count of four and exhale for your count of four. And as you do, start to feel that head space materialize. Start to feel things open, doors open through your body as you lift up through and notice your posture again. Just find that breath, take two or three more breaths. So some scaras aren't always bad habits. They can be good and it can be what helps us, but it's finding the ones that we need to sometimes change up a little bit. Okay, so eyes still closed. We're gonna do the three part breath, the one where we lift our arms, one, two, three, and take in a little bit of breath each time. So starting when you're ready on the inhale, we go inhale, continue the inhale as you raise your arms another two thirds into two thirds and inhale right up to the top to full. Turn the palms, exhale all the way down in one long exhale. Again, inhale, inhale, inhale. If I'm not going at your pace, take your own, remember, exhale. Gently letting the hands release and come down. So take one more. Exhale, turn the palms, release. Okay, so start again. This time as you come up, focus on your hands and the energy you can feel in the palms of your hands. So inhale, inhale, inhale. Turn the palms downwards, exhale fully down. Really focus on the palms of the hands as you're doing this. Two more of those. So really thinking of what's happening in your hands as you gather the energy on the inhale up the way and take the energy in 
Exhaling, you're releasing. You can maybe feel a pressure, a very slight pressure as you exhale and draw your hands back down. Take one more. And then the next three, we're going to focus on our nostrils. So we're breathing in through our nostrils, out through our nostrils, as always, as if you can. So inhale, focus on the inhale, coming in through both nostrils. Notice if one nostril is slightly stronger than the other. Exhale through both nostrils. Take two more, really focusing on what's coming in and what's going out through your nostrils. If you haven't got the nostril availability, of course, you can always use your mouth. Try and focus on that energy now that you're bringing in and releasing through those nostrils. Last one of those. And as you release, we're going to now go into focus as we start again on our body weight changing. So as you're on your next one, inhale, inhale, and feel yourself lift as you inhale completely up to the top. Exhale, feel yourself soften down into your sit bones, slowly letting things release downwards. Take two more lifting and releasing. Thinking of your body as it lightens, as it comes up, and it gets slightly denser and more relaxed, a little bit heavier as it lowers back down. Still on a three-part inhale, remember, and a one-part exhale. And then release the last one. Let everything sink down gently into the sit bones. And keep your eyes closed. Release the breath for a second. Cross and recross your legs. Notice how that makes you feel. It doesn't feel quite right for me. So just notice if it makes a difference. Go back to your posture points again. Find your sit bones. And then take one hand and place it on your heart and one hand and place it on your belly. Eyes are still closed. We're finding our breath again. So three breaths, just inhaling for four, exhaling for four at your pace. And as you do so, notice what you're focusing on. It might be my voice, it might be your hands. It might be the back of your body or your hips or something that is making you focus on them. Just notice what your focus has been taken to. And then after that, we're going to start again and we're going to think about moving the breath to the belly for the next three breaths. So focusing on inhaling and feeling the belly swell into the palm of your hand that's there. Exhaling, drawing the hand back slightly as you release the breath again through your nostrils. If you're not in the same breath uh, pace as me, then just do your own thing. But take two or three more breaths, focusing on the belly breathing here. And then start again and move your attention now to focusing on your diaphragmatic expansion. So think about that 360 degrees of the diaphragm in the center of your body, sort of from your ribs down to your back. Think of everything moving and opening as you inhale. And exhaling, everything softens, releases, makes more space again for your belly um, to move. So take two or three, just focusing on your diaphragm as you're moving your breath in and out of you really expanding through your ribs. And then just breathe. And then we're gonna start again. This time we're gonna focus on our pelvic floor. So as you inhale, you feel a little pressure on the pelvic floor as everything swells through your belly. As you exhale, draw the pelvic floor up, tuck it under your ribs. So take a few more of those, just inhaling, Feeling the pelvic floor, feel a little bit of pressure on the lower half of you there. Exhaling, drawing up through from the pelvic floor, lifting it as high as you can. Hopefully you've all found it. And then eyes still closed, let go of the breath for a second. 
take your hands and change them round to the other way round. So move the one that was on your heart to your belly and vice versa. Controlling your breath again. Does your focus change because your hands have changed? Okay, so starting again with our focus changing now to as you breathe in, heart opening. As you exhale, heart softening. Heart opening on the inhale. Heart softening on the exhale. Maybe say those words a couple of times as you take your next few breaths. So opening heart or heart opening and heart softening. And then moving the focus in the next few breaths to your third eye. So third eye opening on the inhale. That eye softening on the exhale. Quite a difficult one to move to maybe. So taking the breath up to the top of the nostril entry point. That's your third eye. Focus on there, opening and softening. Much easier with your eyes closed, obviously. And then for the next few breaths, don't focus, start again and just accept and enjoy the breath. So take two or three more inhales and exhales at your own pace. No focus needed, just enjoying and accepting the energy, the prana, the release of whatever you're finding through your breath. And then keep your eyes closed, pop your hands back onto your knees, into a mudra if you prefer. Keeping the eyes closed, let go of the breath now. And just have a quick mental scan and physical scan of some scatters, any habits you're still holding on to that aren't needed, or maybe the habits you've realized that are actually helpful and support you in this position. And then let go of the breath. If, sorry, we've already let go of the breath. We're going to move now. Um, we're going to still sit in Sukhasana. So if you want to re-cross legs, then please do have a little shake out if you need to in between. <clears throat> so I'm going to come off my block for this. I just feel I should. So change a habit. Going to think of opening. So we're going to open very slowly here. We'll do it two or three times, thinking of starting again from the from the very first point each time. So we're going to start by opening our arms out to the side instead of above our head. Change that movement. And then release the hands back in. Just do a couple of those. So taking the hands out, maybe to shoulder height, maybe below that, doesn't matter where, just opening out through the front of your chest, through the front of your shoulder joint there. Just trying to keep everything else nice and flexible, but stable. Just thinking of moving, opening your shoulder girdle. And then in the next one, we're going up. So take the arms down to the side. Inhale, take the arms up above your head. Turn the palms if you want to. See what you feel like you should be doing. Change it up if you want to or find the support of what you normally do if you want to. And this time we're gonna take the arms up above the head. As you exhale this time, slightly roll forward, upper back and head only. Take the arms down just the way is comfortable. Inhale, take the arms back above the head. So really switching on your core here, tucking your tummy, lifting the hands up just the way you're comfortable. Shoulders might feel quite heavy here. If you're finding this difficult, pop your hands on your knees and just move 
your spine and open your shoulders by drawing them back slightly. So you don't need to use the weight of the hands here. And then on the next one, when we come up, we're maybe going into a slight back bend now. As you come down, open up your arms, stay tall in your spine and just lift your arms behind you and open up. So it's kind of that bird effect. So we're lifting the arms up above the head, not rolling, the body stays still, the shoulders just move and open lower down behind you. Open your wings. Okay, so let's take that lot again, but one at a time. Maybe you go a little bit further this time. Keep your hands on your knees, as I say, and just move the spine if it feels more comfortable. Open and spread. Open the shoulders, even with your hands on your knees, you can do this. Exhale, bring the hands back to the knees. Inhale, lift, open, arms above the head. Exhale, we're rolling forward this time and taking the hands down. Maybe your spine's starting to flex a little bit more. You can get a bit more mobility into this. Lifting the hands up, going into a little bit of a back bend. Exhaling, taking the arms down behind you and your wings and opening up. Maybe you're rounding as well. It's up to you whether you feel you should roll there or not. That again. Inhale, open the arms up, spread your wings out at shoulder height roughly. Exhale, bring them back down to the side. Inhale, when you're ready, we're lifting the arms up above the head. Exhale, we're rolling forward, maybe getting a little bit deeper into this. Inhale, we're taking the arms up above the head. Or we're rolling forward into a little bit of our back bend feeling. Exhale, we're rolling forward if you feel like it, but the arms are coming up behind you now. One more, everybody. Inhale, open the arms, really spreading as much as you can this time. Open the shoulders, hands come down. Inhale, lift up through the shoulders, open and expand up the side bodies. Exhale, rolling forward, open the back of the body, the spine, tuck the tummy, tuck the chin. Inhale, lifting up into a little bit of a back bend. Raising the face up to the sun. Exhale, rolling forward if you feel you're comfortable doing so. Taking the arms back and up behind you. And then come back to neutral. Let go of the breath. Open the eyes if you are happier doing so now. Going to come into um, tabletop. I'm not going to suggest everybody tries this, but it might not be for everyone's knees. Pop your hands on the floor and roll over your knees and come into tabletop. So if that's not for you, just find your way into tabletop. That's fine. So tabletop. From here. Sit back now into child's pose. So gently taking the hips down as you exhale and extending the arms. And then inhaling, bringing yourself back up into tabletop. Just take a couple of those. Exhaling, sitting backwards, feeling the opening up the side bodies. Take it really slowly and gently. You don't need to touch the floor with your head, just rolling open the spine. It's not cat cow quite, it's just opening and flexing a little bit. Coming back down. Next time we come up into tabletop, we're going to start again here and we're going to focus on our hands and we're just going to let go of the breath and just pad the hands a little bit. So pad your hands like a cat. Really feel the palms of the hands, the heel of the hand, everything hit the floor separately and then spread. Find that connection through your hands and then sit back again into child's pose. Keep the hands in that position, extending. Come back up into tabletop. Take one more, really eyes closed, really focus on your hands now as you push backwards into child's pose. And then coming back up into tabletop. We're gonna extend our legs now, so we're focusing on the other end of us, but keep the hands connected as they are. Take the right foot then, trail the toe along the floor, extend it behind you to wherever you're most comfortable. And then just roll on to the ball of your foot. So as you do so, you'll feel your hip hinge on that side moves backwards. Try and draw it forward 
and in parallel to the other one and really extend through the leg that way. Keep the knee soft though, don't um, lock the knee. So in this position, we are flointing. So you're up on the ball of your foot, your toes are open, but then you're going to press gently through the heel of your foot. So really opening up that instep area, the plant, plantar fascia area. And then draw that knee back in. Take the same thing on the other side. So toe trails along the ground to wherever you feel comfortable and extended. Draw your hip flexor back to feeling it's parallel. So you'll feel an opening then across it. Come onto the ball of the foot. Flointing is a thing in yoga. So we're on the ball of the foot, but we're pressing through the heel. And you're opening up the plantar fascia there. And then draw that knee back in. Hands still connected. Inhale as you exhale, sit back into child's pose again. Inhale back up to tabletop. Take it really slowly, really focus on what you're doing. Next time we come up, we're going to do a figure of eight. Choose which direction or let your body choose which direction with your hips. Start, come up to tabletop, rolling through your hips and then rolling round your shoulders. So a figure of eight shape you're drawing. Imagine the pencils on your belly. Talking of which, what's your belly doing? Try and keep it engaged so you've got some support here for your lower back. And then come to neutral and sit back again into child's pose. As you come back up, we're going to do the figure of eight in the other direction. So you have to think about this one. Which way did you go last time? So go the opposite direction, if you can remember. Your body might tell you, actually. It might say, oh, no, I've done that already. We do a few figure of eights in that end. We've got helicopters, we've got trains, we've got everything going on here. <laughs> Only in this morning. OK, and then come to neutral, sit back into child's pose. So hands and knees and feet are connected. Come back up as you inhale into tabletop. We're going to go into cat cow now. So rotate your inner elbows forward. Make that strong connection between wrist and shoulders. Draw up the tummy. Support the lower back. Press gently into the front of your feet and feel that connection through to your knees and that little bit of a lift there and that support. Tuck your chin and find that long back of neck and reach out through your crown. And then find your breath and begin cat cow in your own time. So inhaling neutral, first of all, and then exhaling, we go into cat. So using all the connections on the floor and the ground to support you, using your hands, the palms of your hands are lifted and domed. We're rolling into cow on the inhale. So it's exhale, cat, inhale, cow in your own time. But thinking of what's connected to the ground, the floor here, and using them to just gently lift you and support you, using your own body to support you. Your tummy is still engaged, don't let it flop. Your chin's still engaged, don't let it flop. Your feet are still engaged. Your palms of your hands are lifting. Come back to neutral, sit back into child's pose. If anybody at any point needs to just stop and have a roll around the wrist, then please do. Coming back up into tabletop, we're going to take dynamic cat cow now. So it, all the points that should be supporting you, check them. Tummies, feet, chins, hands, elbows. And then begin when you're ready your own dynamic cat cow or just take normal if you'd rather. So we're still exhaling as we go back into cat, dropping the hips down towards the heels, extending through the arms, using the hands then to pull you forward, keeping the heart close to the floor if you can, and rolling up into cow. Exhaling back into cat, taking the tailbone backwards, moving downwards, rolling forwards, lifting up through the heart. Heart moves between the hands, we come to cow. Take one more in your own time, focusing on your, your own focal points here. And then come back up to neutral. Sit back into child's pose. Come back into tabletop on an inhale. 
Then we're going to walk our hands to the right or left, whichever you decide. So walk your hands just round to where you're comfortable. Let the head come with you and then let the head go a little bit further maybe and look back towards your left foot in my case. And then walk back to neutral. And walk to the other side, keeping that tummy engaged, keeping the chin engaged. As you come over to the other side, let the nose go where it wants to and go a little bit further. And then walk back to neutral. Sit back into child's pose, hands are connected. Head is off the floor here still. We're gonna to walk to the first side you walked to before. So walk back over to that side in child's pose. When you're there, take a couple of breaths here, find the space in the open side of your body. The space in your ribs or between your ribs rather, the space between your ribs and pelvis. Maybe you can feel an opening even down through the pelvis. Side of the neck. And then walk back to neutral. And to the other side in child's pose. Finding those spaces again. Maybe this side feels more spacious. Maybe it feels a little bit tighter. Maybe there's points you can feel where it's not quite opening. See if you can breathe into those spaces that are still a little bit closed. And then walk back to neutral. And then come back up to tabletop. And start again, cueing yourself here in tabletop. This is the last tabletop. So we just want to find your tabletop, how you feel in it, what you're focusing on. Remember all the cue points, you should know them by now, but I'll just go over a few. The feet, the knees, the tummy, the hips feeling square over the knees, the length in the spine. So the hips going backwards, the crown moving forwards, the back of the body, the shoulder blades go back onto the body by pushing gently through the palms of the, or the fingers, no, sorry, the uh, knuckles of your hand and your heels. So you've got that lift sensation through the palm of the hand, just like you've got an instep on your foot. And then re re rotate your elbows if you haven't, so that they're facing more towards the front, the, the join of your, the inside of your elbow. Crown and chin is the other points. And heart, maybe move your heart slightly forward. So that should feel quite balanced and supported. If there's anything that's holding or anything that doesn't feel right, it may be a repetitive habit. So see if you can just have a little jiggle and reset yourself so that it feels more comfortable and balanced in this asana. Okay, so we're going to sit back and we're going to rock forward and bring our right foot forward now when you're ready into a, a low lunge, but a closed low lunge. So everybody bring the right foot forward, but keep your back hip over your back knee. So we're not quite as open a low lunge as we'd normally go into. I know some of you will want to, and that's a, a habit thing as well, but um, this is just starting here just to focus on this. So hands to heart centre. We're going to raise our hands in Anjali Mudra above our heads. As we do that, we're going to start again and think a couple of things here as we do that. So when you're ready, inhale, take the hands above the head. Exhale, lower. So go back to the side bodies as you do the next couple and really think of extending that space between your ribs and your waist. And maybe you can feel it move up to your armpits. So don't push and don't pull from your fingertips rather. Think of pushing through from your feet this time. Lift up, start again from your feet, moving up through the back foot and the front foot. Use them for your support and your lift and the inhale. I'm going a little bit quicker than I should, so do it in your own breath. Nice slow breath, really feeling that space. From the back knee, feel that long line up through to your armpit on that side as you expand and lift. So it's an extension, not a back bend, obviously. And then lower the hands back down. 
pop the hands to the floor, swap sides, so rock back, bring the other foot forward. Still that closed version. Make sure you're on train tracks though. Hands to heart center. Rotate your heart, make sure you're facing forwards. Draw your tummy in, tuck the bottom under. Draw your shoulders back, open them a little bit more. Now begin, start again, lifting up through, take two or three breaths, thinking of expansion, extension. Using the support through from the floor, through from your feet. Oh, got cramp. Inhale, see if you can go a little bit further each time. Maybe you can just find a bit more space in the side bodies. Pardon me. And bring your hands back to the floor. Bring the front foot back. Sit back into child's pose. Have a little wiggle at your wrists if you need to. Shake them out. I'm going to rock back. And option here is to stay in that position or to go into more open Anjuni Asana this time. So rocking back and drawing your front foot, your right foot again forward into a more open version if you want, if that's what you want this morning. Hands again to heart centre. Everybody, wherever you are, whatever you've chosen, think of the energy in the ground coming up through your feet. Close your eyes if you're finding this, that it's not challenging, challenging enough. Um, so close your eyes as you inhale, lift. Find that extension, first of all, through your side bodies. Exhale down. So take two or three, just extending, using your feet to lift through from to your fingers. Feel the energy move up through you as you inhale. This time, see if you can roll your heart forward, come into a bit of a back bend at the top and look up towards the sun. Keep that tummy engaged, support everything through from your feet upwards. Use the same cues. Start again. If you've lost the plot, start again. Come back to neutral, hands to the floor, step back with the front foot, rock back, bring the back foot forward. So your left foot now in my case. Make sure your feet feel secure before you move into this. Bring your hands to heart center. Draw your tummies in, tuck the bottom just a little bit. Draw the heart round if it's facing sideways here. I'm cueing myself here. Tuck your chin, find that long back of neck. Draw your shoulders back onto the back of your body. When you're ready, eyes closed if you want the challenge, remember. Inhaling, we're finding the extensions. We're finding that energy flow up through from the knees and the feet. See if you can sink a little bit more if you want to get, expand a little bit more through the, the hip flexors. And then when you're ready, opening up into your back bend. So all of this we're doing, working towards doing our um, sun salutation in the moment. So hopefully it's gonna be perfect today. Is it a perfect thing? Bring your hands down to the floor, step back into tabletop. So we're coming up now to do walk the dog. Walk the dog is an inversion. Remember, everybody can feel a little bit lightheaded at times. So do come back down to tabletop. If you don't want to do walk the dog, do the similar things in tabletop. Okay, so find the palms of your hands again in tabletop. Find your feet, tuck your toes on the floor. So you're rolling onto the ball of your foot in a minute. And then you should be at roughly the right spacing for your body as you come up. So take it gently, press gently through the hands. Elbows are still facing forward in the inner elbow if you can. Rolling up through the feet onto the pad of the feet. Keep the heels up off the floor for the moment. Knees can be very soft. It's a first down dog. When you're up there, just walk the dog two or three times. So rolling through the feet, through the plantar fascia again. Giving it a little bit of a massage here, a little bit of an opening. And then gently moving your heart forward, taking your knees back down into tabletop. Take it carefully, a lot of shoulder pressure there. Okay, when you're ready, we're going back up into down dog. So push back through the feet, lifting the hips, rolling them up, extending through from the palms to the shoulders. Head can be a bit dangly, this time twisted dog. So 
walking the dog, but you're moving your knees then forward and twisting slightly at the hips. So it's just like you're wiggling your bottom. A little bit more movement through from the feet to the hips. Do stop at any point. If you need to come down, please do take your own cue for that. And then come back down slowly, carefully onto your knees. Into tabletop. In tabletop, we're going to lift our knees off the floor about an inch or so and take two or three lifts. So tuck your toes, come onto the, the start of the pad of your foot, it feels like. Make sure your shoulder arm and um, the shoulder wrist is connected properly. So stacked. Draw the tummy in to support you. That's really important here. Lift that tummy up and tuck it under your ribs as much as you can. And then when you're ready, we're just going to push through the feet and the hands and lift about an inch off the floor. Exhale down. So take three or four more of these. Inhaling as you lift. Engaging those core muscles, exhaling as you lower. Elbows stay connected, but try not to lock them. You don't need to go too far up, just an inch of stall or wherever you feel you want to go to. Exhale down. Take one more, thinking of lengthening through to the crown this time. And if you need a rest, sit back into child's pose, have a little wriggle through your wrists if you need to. Choice here is to do that again or to come up with me into down dog and to do some knee dips this time. So whichever you'd rather, I've got some very enormous ants on my mat now. Okay, so if you're coming into down dog with me, roll up carefully. And then all you're doing here is rolling back down, but not quite reaching the floor. So shoulder and arm strength here. Sorry, Pauline, you seem to have picked the wrong class here. Um, obviously in down in tabletop, you can be just lifting knees or just padding your hands, whatever you feel is suitable for you. Otherwise in down dog, we're just rolling down through and rolling back up. Shoulder strength coming into this one. And then come back down to the floor. Take a pause if you need to at any point, have a stretch if you need to at any point. Coming back up with me if you're not into down dog again. So in down dog, now go back, start again. Find your hands, find the points of the triangle on your hands. So your knuckles and your heel of your hand. Push gently through them. Find that extension then of the energy through to your shoulders. Feel that stretch through your arms. As if you're pushing the door away from yourself. And then gently come back down to tabletop. Coming back up again into down dog this time, focusing on your feet and your hips. So this time, see if your heels can go a little bit closer to the floor. Maybe you can open the back of your legs a little bit more. And maybe you can roll your hips up towards that back top corner. So it opening up the back of the legs, quite a stretch here. So take it easy. If it's not quite ready, then don't do it yet. Using your hands to push and support you to open up the back of your legs. And then gently bringing yourself back down into tabletop. If at any point you need to untuck the toes and have a little slap through your feet, then please do. One last time here in down dog, everybody. And this time, your best down dog. Is there a best? Is there a perfect? No. But the best one for you, that's the answer. So roll up carefully when you're ready into down dog if you're coming with me. And in your down dog, find the cue points that I've given you. Find the samskaras that you can find and change if you need to. Or maybe use them more efficiently. Might be you're very good at holding your tummy here. Might be that you can direct your hips up. Just watch you're not opening that crease of the hips too much and using that to extend. See if you can roll the body up as well as the back of the legs. And breathe. Find your breath. And then lower carefully back down to the floor. 
slip back into child pose. If you want to bring a brick in now or pop your head to the floor, please do. We're going to have a bit of a rest here. So pop your head to the floor just for four or five breaths. Arms can be wherever feels most comfortable. Make sure the hips are going backwards towards your heels, that expansion and extension through the lower back. Tummy's softened and resting on your thighs. Shoulders probably feel quite tired. So find a comfortable position for them. It doesn't need to be extended. It could be swept round, hands to the feet and allow your shoulders just to expand across the back of your body and roll forward. Wherever you are, find your breath. And find the back of your body to breathe into. As you need this little bit of a reset, it may be something that you find hard to do is to reset um, and rest in between things, but we're going to do more shoulder work. So I know what the stick men are going to do, and I know that we're going to need a little bit of a rest here for our shoulders and our wrists, etc. So just take this chance while you can, because otherwise you might regret it. If you stick with some of these old bad habits, um, then you often do regret it. Okay, so we're going to move from this. So move the brick out of the way. And from this, just bring yourself down onto your bellies. So we're moving towards Cobra, another part of a sense salutation here. So Cobra, um, first of all, find that extension through to your crown. So head on the floor still. But really tuck the chin and feel that extension on the back of the neck. Hands are still on the floor, bodies on the floor, everything's on the floor. Bring your hands then so your elbows really tuck into your sides. And the tips of your fingers are roughly on line with the tops of your shoulders. Okay, so find your breath again and just gently roll up to your first cobra, very slowly on the inhale. Focusing on the hands here and the elbows. So take two or three, just looking at what's happening in your hands and elbows. Don't worry too much about anything else at the moment. Just gently pressing into the triangle on your hand again, keeping the elbows tight to your side to switch on the back of your body. That's what that does. So by drawing in your elbows, you're drawing in your shoulder girdle on the back of your body and you're connecting to that area that's lifting you here. And then come back down to resting your forehead. Moving down to the lower body, starting again with it. So legs can be hip distance or wider here if it's better for your lower back. Draw your tummy in, lift it up off the floor. As you do so, squeeze your glutes slightly and move your pelvic bone and pubic bones forward into the floor. So it's kind of pelvic tilt feeling there, drawing the tummy back and tucking the bottom under. That's your support at the bottom. So again, three baby cobras. Keep the elbows in, use the hands, keep that long back of neck, gently lifting up on the inhale, using the connection now through the pelvis and the legs um, to lift you, or to stabilize you rather. So the back is lifting you, the lower half of you is stabilizing you, the counterbalance. And then after your next one, bring your head to the floor. Now we're going to focus on the third thing here, starting again, and it's our breath. So the breath will lift us. If you use the breath correctly, you'll feel the expansion and the lift through it, as well as the back of your body and the stability in your legs. So we're moving as we lift, remember, from our roughly the base of your rib cage, round about there, and lifting upwards and opening. So when you're ready, inhale, use the inhale to lift you up as high as you're comfortable. And then lower on the exhale very gently, very controlled still. Use the exhale to control the lower. So take two or three more, 
really focusing on all those points, hands, elbows, pelvic area, tummy lifted, glutes switched on, breath lifting you up and down. The front of the rib cage feels like it's just opening and spreading as you lift. The shoulders are dropping down the back of the body. Oh, it's moving in everything inside me for certain. <laughs> One more. And then come back to the start again. Okay, so that's us got Cobra. Moving into our plank or half plank here. So from this, push up gently and come either into, well, let's everybody go into half plank to start. So you should roughly come up to half plank if you just push into your hands. Half plank, tuck the tummy and tuck the bottom, that pelvic tilt thing again. So make sure you're not sticking the bo bottom out. Feel the front of your feet on the floor. Everybody's in half plank at this point. Push into them gently, push into the knees and lift up through from the lower half. And then find the triangle in your hands again and push gently into the, the triangle to lift and use the support of the floor to lift you up. Tuck the chin and find that long back of neck and then see if you can slide your shoulders down the back of your body slightly. And then gently elbows close to the side, move them backwards and lower carefully back down to the floor. So choice here is to go again for half plank or to come up to full plank. So make your choice now. And we're going to hold there just so that you know. So when you're ready, if you're going up to half plank, tuck the toes, roll onto the foot, push up carefully. Okay, so those in full plank, a little bit extra. You're on the ball of your foot, now flaunt it. So take that heel backwards again. Feel that switch on the back of your legs and your knees and your tummy. Tuck your tummy, tuck your bottom, everybody. Move up through the space between your ribs and your pelvis, open it. Lift up through the crown, find your breath. And then carefully, elbows close to the side on an exhale. Move the heart slightly forwards as you come down to the floor and take a rest. Hands under head, take a little breather. One more time, coming up to half plank or full plank. Didn't know that was going to happen, did you? <laughs> and we're going to focus on the breath this time just. So carefully bring yourself up to half plank or full plank. Find your position first of all, and then start to control the breath if you haven't. And just focus on your breath. Inhaling deeply down through to your heels or your knees. Exhaling softening slightly, but keeping that support and control. Elbows then close to the side, heart moves slightly forward, come down to the floor. Toes together, sit back into wide leg child's pose. Let the belly go. Rest into this, head to the floor or on a brick or a cushion if you want. Bring the arms maybe into goalposts, that's quite nice to spread them and release. And breathe. Counter pose. Counter pose is there for a reason. Um, can be more important than the pose, to be perfectly honest. And that's a samskara that we need to break. If that's not in your practice, thinking of a counter pose as being more important than the pose, then you need to think again, maybe change it up. It's a time the body resets, rebalances. We hear all these words all the time. But we've just felt the, um, certainly here, it's going to be 32 degrees today. We've just felt the, the benefit of, of resting after you have feel a little bit exhausted by heat or whatever you happen to be exhausted by at the moment. We need to take rest. We need to give the body a chance. That's when we heal. 
um, not just reset, regroup, we actually heal in those moments when we rest. Okay, so we're going to come up and take our sun salutations now. So if you're ready to come with us, come up, tuck your toes, walk your hands back, come into a very soft forward fold. Look along the floor as you come up, maybe roll up if you don't want to sweep up, take it easy. We've had our heads down, feel a little lightheaded maybe. Otherwise, take yourself back up, come back up to the top and bring the hands down through heart centre ready for our sun salutation. So we're going to do sun salutation at your pace. If you want to take a couple of extra breaths, we won't do the first one on the breath on the right side. We'll try the second one on the breath. If you want to go on the breath on the first side, please do. But otherwise, we'll take the first one a little bit easier. Do be aware of your balance in your head, etc. here. So don't go too quickly for yourself. So front of the mat, thinking of all those things we've done this morning to start again. So inhaling, arms above the head. Exhaling, swan dive gently into a soft forward fold. Legs might not feel quite open yet. Inhale, lift out into your half fold. Take a breath there. Exhale, forward fold. Take an extra breath there. Inhale, half fold again. Another extra breath. Exhale, forward fold. We're going to move on now into our Anjini Asana. So take the right foot, oops, left foot back, right foot back, whichever you want to do. Come into your um, low lunge. When you're ready, we're going to sweep the arms up on an inhale. And just hold them in that extension that we did at the beginning. Back leg can still be tucked under you. It can be a closed low lunge or an open low lunge, whichever is best for you. Eyes can be opened or closed, however you much you want to challenge yourself. But everybody find that extension here through the side bodies, up through from the hips, through from the feet to the fingers. Exhale, lower the arms back down to the floor. Stepping back into tabletop or down dog. No, sorry, plank or half plank. <laughs> Not knowing what I'm doing here. Plank or half plank. And then lowering carefully down to the floor. Finding your baby cobra here. So inhale, roll open. Take a breath. Exhale, lower. Now we're going into down dog, so pushing back up, tucking toes, lifting up or into tabletop, coming into your position, lifting that left foot and stepping forward with the left leg. I think I went wrong the first time, but never mind. Whichever foot you feel is right, because I've lost it there. Inhale, lift up. Find your extension. Should be the opposite from what you started on. So eyes closed again if you want for a bit of balance. Find the support, find that energy from the floor up to your fingers. Think a little bit more through your hips if you can and open up that back hip flexor. Extend through the webbing of your fingers. Tuck your tummy back, tuck your bottom under. Exhale, take the arms down to the floor. Stepping the back foot forward into our forward fold. Take a breath and then sweeping up carefully, opening the eyes, looking along the floor, hands above the head and Jali Mudra down to heart center. Take a breath, we'll go again. This time I'm going to do it on the breath, but if you want to stop and take a breath in each position, then please do. So inhale, arms above the head. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half fold. Exhale, forward fold. Hands to the floor, step back with the left foot in my case this time. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower. Stepping back into plank or half plank. 
Exhale, lower. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, lower. Inhale, down dog or tabletop. Exhale, there. As you inhale, your right leg comes up now. No, left leg comes there. Right leg comes up. Right leg comes forward in my case. Exhale, the back knee down. Inhale, find your lift expansion. Exhale, lower. Inhale, step the back foot forward. Rest there, take a breath, everybody. When you're ready, eyes open, look along the floor. Inhale, take yourself back up to the top. Hands to Anjali Mudra. Draw back down and find yourself in Tadasana Mountain Pose. Okay, so we're going to roll down and come straight into, into um, Shavasana. So when you're ready, find yourself in a very soft roll down. Maybe your hands on your legs. Take your time. Let your energy lower with you. Coming down, hands to the floor. Find your way down onto the mat and then find yourself in Shavasana. So Shavasana. This is one habit we should never give up. And we don't often do Shavasana here for any length of time. We probably won't today, but please remember, it's something we can take any time. And this is the best position to rest and heal in. Maybe listen to music or listen to your breath, do whatever feels right, but closing your eyes and letting your body heal. So in Shavasana, start again. In Shavasana, how do you find this? Do you find it a real challenge, Shavasana? Is it difficult to focus? Is it difficult to relax? Is it difficult to let go? So starting again, look at what your body is doing. Have a body scan. Find points of it that are still holding on. There will be some. It might be your jaw. It might be your hips. It might be your hands. Hands are one of the most difficult things to relax. So find the physical points of you and use your exhale here. Try and release, let them go. Let your legs roll out. Let your hands spread and open. Let your shoulders tuck under you. Open your chest. Release everything into the floor. Physically, let go. Let go of whatever's challenging you, whatever's shouting at you in your body. Let go of it. Release. And then for some of us, the challenge here isn't physical, it's mental. So start again. Mentally, we're going to use the breath. So take 10 breaths, count downwards 10 breaths. I know some of you are having to go on in a moment, so just stay with it. Give yourself the chance. 10 breaths, counting down with each breath. Really focusing on your breath, focusing on the energy, focusing on the nostrils, maybe even focusing on your diaphragm again, focus on your inhale and your exhale in the same way. Finding the breath to release you mentally, to stop whatever's trying to hold you on, challenging you not to lie here and enjoy it. Taking up your head space. So the challenge isn't Shavasana here. It's changing the way we approach it. Every time you take Shavasana, it will be different. Some days you're ready for it, some days you're not. Those are the days you really, really need it. The same goes for everything to do with yoga. But we all have our yoga tools and we can all start again and find the right route for that right occasion. This applies to life, obviously, as well.
So here, please rest in Shavasana if you've got that luxury today. If you need to move on, remember you can go back to it at any time. You don't need to do a full hour's yoga before you can feel that you need to be, that you're allowed to be in Shavasana. But those of us that have to move, please take your time, have a stretch, have a release, waking things up again. And then come up slowly back to sitting in Sukhasana where we began. So my final words here come from Krishna Makarya, who was the guru that my yoga lineage teaching comes from. I know Peggy's slightly different, but Krishna Makarya was actually the brother-in-law of um, Peggy's guru. <laughs> so it all worked together. But So you are all students effectively of the same person as I was. It all follows down that lineage. Not sure it always go with what I do, but hopefully. Um, but his words were, yoga is a process of replacing old patterns with new and more appropriate patterns. And hopefully we can take these lessons and move them into our life as well with that. But in the, on the yoga mat, at least, we can change it up quite often when we need to. Thank you, everybody, for your practice today. Thank you for joining me here in the mountains. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. And see you next Tuesday for some more. Thank you. Namaste.